Yeah. So kind of before speaking about your tunes and live and stuff a wee bit, okay. I wondered who was your biggest musical idol growing up that you can relate to and gravitate toward? So I think that's very different for both of us, yeah, I think. Sure. Um, um, I loved kind of 90s grunge music, like growing up, um, mostly like kind of Pearl Jam, I think, mm. Alice in Chains was a big one, um, but I love Leonard Cohen, he's probably like my favourite songwriter, I think, um, I think we listened to a lot of The Doors kind of in our yeah, teenage years. a lot of dad, dad, dad rock music. Dad rock music. Um, but then, yeah, I totally loved Kings Leon as well, like early years through to like mm. now, so... Yeah, like, I think for me, I was very much more of a kind of garage rock influence. Um, like, obviously, Nirvana are one of the main kind of grungy bands, but drew a lot of kind of our guitar styles from Nirvana, I say, which is funny, like, because obviously the Foo Fighters thing. <laughs> but, um, yeah, um, and the first kind of person that I started listening to that I really wanted to kind of gauge music my kind of writing was um someone called Ty Segal um just kind of fell in love with one of his albums Melted and still remains to be one of my favorite albums um and just yeah it's kind of my love for fuzz kind of grew from him and then kind of all the bands surrounding that in that time that kind of Californian kind of essence surf rock as well and yeah. um, doesn't really prevail through our music these days but no. it's a kind of Styles that made me want to pick up a guitar and start building my pedal boards and stuff. Yeah, it's really cool. Like, like obviously, big fans like Nicky, P.J. Harvey and stuff as well. Like, kind of darker kind of essence and stuff. Yeah, yeah, I love like the band Heart and stuff. There's a lot of kind of influence from that as well. <laughs> just loads of bands like we love. Um, yeah, we just like listen to those things. Mm -hmm. um, but like again, musical influences they come vast. Um, like the Moody Blues, like they're a big band from the 60s that we love um, as well. So I think the music we write is probably totally different to people we like what we listen, listen to. to. Yeah, yeah. sure, yeah. And you mentioned there like kind of a few bands that you gravitated toward in your teenage years. Yeah. Was that when you really started to follow them on music or had it happened, started before or after that? Oh, well, that was probably before, I'd say, like, mm -hmm. and then we kind of just, because we started to do, like, a lot of acoustic stuff before, like, mm -hmm. we were big fans, like, First Aid Kit, mm -hmm. um, and, uh, yeah, I think the more we kind of listened to the, the music then kind of followed so the music we're actually doing now. Um, yeah, yeah, I think it's just, you know, as time goes on, you kind of mature a wee bit, and, um you know, you're always going to listen to the same kind of bands you did um, when you were younger and you still love, but I think, you know, there's so many different um, kind of sub-genres that are kind of existing these days that, you know, music's forever changing, I think. As time goes on, we're kind of changing yeah. and we're maturing. Because you can tell to find, like, what we're listening to, like, at the moment, like, probably will gravitate the, the new stuff almost. Um, like you're saying, like, it's just because it's changing. But I think you'll always have the kind of your main influences and you go back to that sometimes. And how did the the transition occur between, like, listening to the folks music and then maybe playing on the folks tunes on a guitar to writing your own stuff? Eh, uh, oh, I don't know. Um, I have no idea. I guess when you're, like, you're learning your kind of, the, your favourite songs, you know, you kind of get a little bit of insight of like your, your favourite artists and what they play and then you kind of draw it towards your own kind of writing and it's not kind of that you're kind of copying no. or you, you kind of gain your own you know individuality through you know because obviously we're kind of primarily guitar band you get to play your, your famous guitar riffs but you're just like you know when you're kind of learning guitar and you're learning your favourite songs and that's like that's how we developed our style because we're just kind of getting a feel for what music we like so it kind of reflects on our songwriting musically. So that's, I guess, the transition then. Mm -hmm. And do you feel like what you're trying to say with your music has kind of been similar the whole way through? Do you think you've kind of changed what you want to say with what you're writing? No, it's totally changed. Like uh, like I said, um, well, Chloe said, sorry, that, um, well, we kind of played more acoustic, folky style when we started. It was when we were like 16, 17. And, um, it just kind of felt like, you know, we wanted to play something different, kind of uh, drawn to to kind of get electric guitars. And then it, it was kind of systematic. We got um, like our pedal boards and, you know, start to film with effects. And um, then obviously we had 
really rubbish amps but then <laughs> got better amps. and it's just like kind of building and like it snowballed into getting better things and then mm-hmm. it's just all kind of comes together um with how you want your 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 sound um like what kind of style yeah. your sound you want okay, we're big fans of obviously you, you could hear it sometimes like you're smashing pumpkins and things and it just obviously you do tend to go for the kind of shoegazy kind of stuff as well like I think that's where I'm definitely set yeah I chucked my shoe at someone because they're like oh haha shoegaze I chucked my shoe at them and it wasn't funny it wasn't funny no. they didn't like it no. it wasn't a good joke how did um, like breaking into the Glasgow scene have an impact on on your music and how you sounded did that have quite an effect yeah you? so we used to go to a lot of the shows before we started playing uh, I'd say like picking up electric guitars it was primarily like it was more acoustic stuff but then we went to go see bands like so in Glasgow, I'd say like the Deaf Cats, and at the time it was the Blindfolds, and mm-hmm. we just watched in their sets. It was like, holy oh, shit, like let's let's do this. Like this is the bands we kind of want to like be playing with and stuff. And I guess that's what kind of gives us a wee kick up the bum to then get into the kind of Glasgow music almost. And I think that was a big step for us to then, and obviously like it's people along the way, like managers and stuff, and then gig reps and promoters and stuff that then kind of pick up on that and then they'll kind of give you shows and stuff as well so I think at the time also there was like for us there wasn't really well what gigs we went to there wasn't really any female presence in classical music scene so it's really nice to see like reflecting from when we kind of first started music like maybe five six years ago that there is such a strong female presence in Glasgow and it's kind of slowly starting to kind of balance itself out a wee bit and it's it's really assuring that and reassuring that you know, girls are actually picking up music and they're feeling comfortable to come forth and actually, you know, you know, music's quite personal in, it, in, your, in your project and I feel like this is our baby and this is probably the same to other, you know, musicians that it's difficult to kind of get up on stage and actually play your project that you've been playing in your room for so long. So having that kind of transition from not playing music to actually something, you know, triggers you to actually get up and play music, you know, it's really nice to see that it's starting to balance out with the number of gals playing music these days. Was it, so was it quite sparse when you kind of first came into series? That- yeah, I'd definitely yeah, say so, say but so. like at the time you didn't think about it, we just wanted to go and play music, like we didn't, it wasn't until other people started coming in and saying it, it was like, well, we'd kind of never thought about that, but maybe that's a good thing, like, um, yeah, and it's never kind of, you know, phased us that that was the case. Yeah. It was just, again, just kind of playing music and then just noticing that there's other kind of bands with females in them, which is really cool. Yeah. And where do you kind of feel you like sitting the scene now? Do you kind of... Well, I just feel kind of... And this is, I mean, we're st- still young people, but it old, feel old almost. Like, no, I would say old. We've just kind of <laughs> been been and we've played quite a lot of shows like in and out so we've kind of seen the formation throughout the years um, of different bands kind of coming and going and seeing them progress and it's amazing it truly is like and I think everyone's striving to do so well at the moment and there's that kind of push with every band which is so nice to see um, so I think it's definitely really di- rubbing off and yeah, everyone really isn't diverse it? like it's so easy to group certain bands together in Glasgow um, you know it's either this scene or that scene like I've heard people say it's really not the case like you really have to look at each individual band and they've got their own kind of niche thing that makes them special there's not like one band you would go oh they sound like such and such it's just kind of uh, people are getting a kind of habit to like group bands together and that's what's good about Glasgow is there's like not two bands that are doing like this similar thing. thing but in a way they are doing their same thing is that they're kind of trying to break out and it, you know I feel like some bands are quite frustrated because they're getting grouped together as another band but yeah it, it, it's thriving at the moment I was, and people are looking into Glasgow it's like a hub almost mm-hmm. and it's, it's cool to be part of and it's it's cool to have like seen it all people happen. People want to come now to Glasgow shows which is really good. Yeah for sure. Does it ever feel weird kind of looking Back of the scene, like well, over the last five years. Yeah. Like we've seen it not change, but just it's just different now. Um, but we don't know if it's for better or for worse. Like it's just the things are always going to change. So yeah. nothing lasts forever. It's the world's always changing and everything's changing. And 
people's experiences, you know, you're always going to have these kind of memories and people hold on to them. But, you know, time goes on, people change and their ideas change and what they want change. So it's never going to be the same. So we're just kind of, th- I don't know, thankful that we've had the memories of mm-hmm. each stage, you know. As you grow older, you're, you're going to experience new things. And, yeah, it's always going to change. And can I... To look to your, to your singles as well for a moment, and kind of the indie piece, all the music that you put out. Yeah. At what point do you kind of you find your voice and you kind of mm. realise what you wanted to do and express through your music? Oh, I don't know. Um, but like Hannah said, it's just so at the point in time you're doing it, you don't actually realise where you are. Like, no. I, but we could probably agree to disagree. It was different times, mm-hmm. so I, I don't really know. Um, but I definitely like what we're doing now. I think it's definitely where we kind of wanted to be. So I'll just yeah. keep it at that. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Sweet, I'll sweet you cool. Sweet you cool. Was that a, a phrase that you heard and picked up on and then decided to form a, a song around? Right, no. So it was just me being lazy that I just didn't like it, it in English. So I kind of changed it to French and it sounded better and it comes across really well in the chorus and things so um, and there's a bit where it shouts coming out the chorus it goes Sui je cool are and it just it does it sounds really good in the song so it just worked out the way it did yeah yeah people just try and say it. it's just and you don't even correct them just like yep that's it yeah are you are you able to turn your musical brain off or are you constantly looking for inspiration Oh yeah, constantly, yeah. Um, because we just want to be the best musicians we can. We don't ever think, settle and think, right, this is us, we're happy. No. It's just, I don't think it, anyone's like that. So we're constantly looking to see how we can do better and we're obviously looking um, in different directions all the time. So mm, never yeah. close the book. Yeah, I think it's boring if <laughs> that's the case. Like If you're happy with your set list, you're lying. Like, yeah, there's always <laughs> things you could be like, well do that better or you go see a live band and you're like oh that's really cool oh right that's really cool all right okay and you keep it in mind you're like well maybe we should try that it's always just kind of like always kind of and so you always compare yourself to others which is not a very good thing to do but it's like we've had a few people come up to us and say that they've come to all our shows and it's just been completely different and they're like, oh, I love what you're doing here, I love what you're doing that. So I, I can obviously can tell it's from nice, other yeah, sides. It's nice well. to hear that, like, obviously, people, people who you know do to come to our shows a lot do notice a change in certain things, and it it's good because it it means for us that we're kind of moving forward with different things instead yeah. of sometimes you feel like if you're doing the same song over and over, yeah. you can think. Or maybe not moving forward, just moving a different way. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So. Yeah. You mentioned there about how it, it's changed the way that you kind of look at gigs as well. Mm-hmm. What's been the biggest impact the band's had upon your life since it started? How is it, or has it most changed you, rather? Um, there's a few personal things that have happened that have made us look at things a lot differently. Um, but then, from when we were young, it's matured us quite a lot, um, not to take life too seriously. Um, but then also creatively, creatively um, it's things of like going to see another band's playing certain shows, like that's that can change a lot as well. Um, so not just as personal stuff, like creatively, like going to gigs, seeing other gigs. Like I guess mm-hmm. that's changed in, like to what we're doing now. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it's like obviously good times and bad times. So um, I won't tell you too much about it. But again, like I think. Yeah, there are certain things that have definitely mm-hmm. kind of changed how we look and how we play. And mm-hmm. yeah. Is there anything that's really surprised you that you didn't expect when you first started off a band? Uh, to be honest, yes and no. Like, when we, we knew it was going to be obviously hard. Yeah, like, you know, we we did music as kind of a wee fun thing. Like, yeah, we, all, was, we obviously never... did, did u- the whole uni thing and obviously have full-time jobs as well as doing this so I think it started off just like you know 
jam, fun, getting gigs and people asking us to play shows or support them. Yeah. And it kind of just snowballed so from that like... that was the kind of biggest surprise at the start for us that people were actually... Yeah, asking and obviously yeah. we didn't really know how promoters worked or anything, obviously being young girls, so didn't know how promoters work, how you get gigs and it was also... For, and we didn't know anybody who played music. Like we don't come from a really musical family or anything, so or didn't know any friends that you know got on gigs and stuff. So I think from us, like that whole essence of like didn't expect us to really want to actually do this as a full time profession, despite having full time jobs outside of this. But yeah, I think for me that took us kind of by surprise. That, that kind of our love for playing didn't realise how much we actually enjoyed it. Yeah, um, it, it does. It would be a purge from the outside with a lot of the stuff that you've achieved and the connection which you've got to do that looks like it is a full, a full dead excite. If you look at Foo Fighters, for example, <laughs> what was that like? That must have been. Yeah, it's great. Insane. Like, yeah. I was definitely one for the bucket list. I think it was my favourite day in the whole world. Um, it was just even playing to a big Glasgow crowd, like, even in that, as well as supporting the Foo Fighters. Like, they were, the crowd were amazing, um, they could appreciate our position that we were in and it was yeah, really good. Yeah, it was special. You tell everybody it was just really so chuffed for us and it was really, it was really, yeah, it was as special as you, you know, you can think it was. Yeah, and it was a good show performance wise for us, I think, as well. We were very happy with it. Yeah, really happy. Want to do it again. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I would. <laughs> that actually kind of ties onto my last question. Which was, if there's one moment from the band's history that you could go back and relive and live it one more time? Uh, well, do you know, I think because that was just fairly recently, I can remember it really well and that, that will last me for a while. Yeah. I don't know, there was, um, we think 2016 at Teen Park was really special. Yeah. Um, We've been going for years. So to teen, but I think obviously we'd played Teen yeah. the Park the year before that, but that year especially, all our friends were playing that year. And LCD Sound System were playing that year as well, yeah. and it was the whole thing that was the kind of last Teen the Park, and I think obviously we miss it so much, and being with all of our friends in that day, and then it tied up the day obviously with um, LCD Sound System playing all my friends, and we're all together, and it was it was it was a really magical moment, and. Obviously, we will never have that really again. So, if we could probably go back to that, it would probably be that moment. Yeah. Yeah, it's cool. Hey, that's a really nice note to end on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, you're so good. You're just so easy. Going with the questions are really good. <laughs>